like most people, you are told that um, it's going to take two to five years to really grow um, a business and make a profit. And I believe that. And because I believed it and valued it, that's what happened to me. In fact, it didn't, it didn't take me five years. It took me like seven years to really understand. And so I made all the mistakes. Um, you know, I chased customers. I struggled. I, I worked overtime. We're talking about a 40 to 50 hour work week or more to make very little. And that very little was like 30,000 a year in California. Yeah. Nobody could really live off of that. And so um, it wasn't until I started freelancing for a billionaire. In fact, he just happened to be a black billionaire. And I asked him the question of how he became so successful. And he told me it was because of government contracts that, and that is what helped him. And it took me a couple of years to figure it out. But once I did, I was able to double my revenue in just for just 28 days of work. So for 28 days of doing video photography work, um, I secured a $70,000 contract and it blew, it literally blew my mind. Like you just whistled right there, but it just literally blew my mind that you can make that type of money in short, such a short period of time, especially coming from struggling and working hard, right? Over the past two years alone, I've helped more than 5,000 small business entrepreneurs get pre-qualified for government contracts. And I've, and I've helped a, a handful of them actually secure and generate over 25 million and growing in additional revenues on top of what they were already doing. And really it all starts with a four-step system. The first step is... The biggest risk that most entrepreneurs take is trying to build a successful business without funding. But that risk is a reality for one out of every three entrepreneurs because their personal credit isn't where it needs to be in order for them to access that capital. Now, the truth is you can close the gap between where your business is versus where you want it to be by leveraging business credit. But if your personal credit report is poor, 99% of banks and lenders are going to deny you from doing so. And I should know because a couple of years ago, I leveraged my personal credit report to get funding from Chase to start my company. And now that very same company, Take All Financial, is serving entrepreneurs just like you that are looking to restore their credit to get access to five to six figures in funding. So if you wanna go from risk to reward, click the link above or below this video to schedule your free consultation so that we can restore your credit and put you in position to access capital to build the business of your dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Marvin Francois Show, your number one source for all things business, finance, and investing. And today huh, is a very special day because our guest today is a mother, wife, entrepreneur, business coach, public speaker, and government contract strategist extraordinaire. With over 15 plus years of business experience, our guest has taken her expertise of running a multi-million dollar empire and use it to empower minority business owners all across the country on how to grow profitable businesses by leveraging government contracts. Whether she's coaching business owners through her trillion dollar GovCon accelerator program or teaching entrepreneurs how to build a multi six figure business through her monthly GovCon challenge, our guest's mission remains the same to give business owners just like you the tools, information, and resources needed to live life by design, not by default. And today, she's here to do more of the same. Ladies and gentlemen, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, by way of San Francisco, California, I'm here with the one, the only, Dr. Carwana D. Irving. How are you? Awesome. Thank you. Most, doing great. Most definitely. Most definitely. It's a pleasure to have you on, Dr. How are you on your end? Everything's amazing, you know, um, getting ready for the new year. You know, they mm -hmm. say you got to stay, um, you know, a couple quarters ahead to plan yep. for the new year. So I'm ready. Most definitely. Ready. Most definitely. And same same on my end. And, you know, more importantly, I'm extremely excited to be able to have this sit down with you. I said it off camera. I'll say it again on camera. I've been following you for a little bit now. And this is a field or arena I've always wanted to tackle for quite some time. But I was waiting for the right person to sit down with to really unpack it for my audience. And I said, who better than the best of the best? Dr. Kwana herself. Let's get into it. I'm definitely let's, ready to unpack it for sure. Let's, let's do it. I'm extremely excited. So, of course, I know who you are. But, of course, we want to take some time for those who are unfamiliar to get familiar. So, before we get into the fun stuff, the government contracting sure. side of things, for those who don't know, who exactly is Dr. Carwana D. Irving? I am a government contracts extraordinaire. Mm. Who actually 
it's just a regular simple girl, you know, from the urban community who was really just trying to figure out how to turn a nickel into a dollar and a dollar into $10 and trying to figure out how to get ahead. And so I grew up, of course, in the San Francisco Bay Area by way of um, being born in Louisiana. And um, I grew up the fourth of seven children. So mm-hmm. I come from a single parent um, household um, in the very middle of the middle class, right? So my mm-hmm. mom, of course, she worked a lot um, at growing up, but I personally, um, remember a struggling childhood, even though we had everything that we wanted, there was a lot of things that I knew I couldn't access because of, um, lack of capital, lack of, um, resources, um, because my mom had seven children to provide for. And so for me, I always had the mentality that I wanted to have more. I just didn't know that it was going to be entrepreneurship, you know, that got me to where I wanted to be. And so, I mean, it's been a long journey, but in a nutshell, that's pretty much who I am. I'm I'm just a regular business entrepreneur um, who's looking to grow. And as I'm growing, I'm helping other people to grow as well. I love that. I love that. Let's dive a little bit more into your early stages of entrepreneurship and really yeah. unpack this thing because people see who you are now, but it was a long journey for you to get here, right? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go back to the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey, because from what I understand, your start began, if I remember correctly, in the early 2000s, I believe 2003, and you had gotten started in the video production industry. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So it's crazy that I bought into um, the American dream of going to school, getting a college education, get a job and all those things before even entrepreneurship. And I did those things and found myself really burnt out, Mm. working really hard. Even though I was making a fair amount of money, I was working really hard and I didn't have much time for me after work. And so um, I started thinking about entrepreneurship. That is where, um, even though I didn't know much about entrepreneurship, I was like, let me just go in it and figure it out along the way. And so um, before I even started the video production company, you know, I tried a lot of things. I tried Mary Kay. I tried, a, you know, multi-level marketing, sold mm-hmm. the juices, all those different things. And then I remembered my passion. Um, so when I went to college, I actually went to school for um, mass communication with an emphasis on broadcast communication. So I fell in love with the whole media industry, broadcast, editing, video, and all those different things. And so um, so after years, a couple of years of trying to figure out how to really start a business or do a business that actually made money or re- at least replaced my income, um, I decided to go with my passion, which was video production. And like most people, you are told that um, it's going to take two to five years to really grow um, a business and make a profit. And I believed that. And because right. I believed it and valued it, that's what happened to me. In fact, it didn't it didn't take me five years. It took me like seven years to really understand. And so I made all the mistakes. Um, you know, I chased customers. I struggled. I, I worked overtime. We're talking about a 40 to 50 hour work week or more to make very little. And that very little was like 30,000 a year right. in California. Nobody could really live off of that. And so um, it wasn't until I started freelancing for a billionaire. In fact, he just happened to be a black billionaire. And mm-hmm. I asked him the question of how he became so successful. And he told me it was because of government contracts that, and that is what helped him. And it took me a couple of years to figure it out. But once I did, I was able to double my revenue in just for just 28 days of work. So for 28 days of doing video photography work, um, I secured a $70,000 contract and it blew, it literally blew my mind. Like you just whistled right there, but it just literally blew my mind that you can make that type of money in short, such a short period of time, especially coming from struggling and working hard. Right. And so I was, at first I thought it was a mistake, honestly, as most people that see things that are great for them, they think this can't be right. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we've been programmed to believe that everything has to be hard. So I really thought that was too easy to make that kind of money. And so um, when I saw how easy it was for me to implement the system into my business. I landed two additional contracts and in just six months grew my business to multiple six figures. And for me, that was like, this is the biggest kept secret that I think most people need to know. Most entrepreneurs are not aware of. And I think it's so transformational that I just start telling everybody about it. Most <laughs> so definitely. that's a little bit about the journey for me. That, I mean, that, that was more than a little bit. That was, that was a <laughs> lot. But once again, it's important for us to dive into that because, 
you know, especially in the day and age that we live in now, a lot of people see the finished product, but there's so yeah. much that goes into where you are now. Yeah. Let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into that because in me learning about your story, <laughs> There was that turning point that you had to go through in you mm -hmm. going through the grind. You're working 40, 50 hour yeah. weeks, right? Yeah. Trying to break that glass ceiling and build a successful yeah. business, but nothing mm -hmm. is seeming to, to, to come together. Yeah. There was a very low point for you where all at the same time, from what I understand, you're going through a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> you're financially not where you want to be. Yeah. And you have your son and yeah. your son is in a situation where he's, I believe he's like going through a growth spurt. Yeah. You're, 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 you're in a position financially where you can't even afford to buy your son a new pair of shoes. Yep. That, and, and that, and, and I don't know if, you know, for parents out there, I think that, that is, that is like heartbreaking when mm -hmm. you're in a position like that, because you're like, Oh, I have this child that I'm supposed to protect and nurture and provide for. And I can't even afford to do that because I'm struggling to trying to figure out how I'm going to make ends meet and robbing Peter to pay Paul. I was that right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I started asking, start doubting myself and I started asking myself, well, should I go back to work? Right. Mm -hmm. I started thinking about the security well, or what I thought would have been security. And then I remembered who I was, right. Mm -hmm. Whose I were, who I, <laughs> who I was. I remembered who I was. Right. And I said, you know what? You are the child of God. And, and I am, and I love the Lord. And, and, and I just started saying, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. And I just started walking in faith in mm -hmm. my business. And I started believing that this too is a part of the journey and it's going to be a part of my story. And so it was, it, it was then like once my divorce literally became, and I don't, you know, I don't promote divorce or anything like that, but I believe a lot of my bless blessings was tied up in just being married to the wrong person at the mm. time. And so like literally seven days after my divorce and it's something about the seventh day, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to even get into the biblical principle of day seven. That's when mm -hmm. God rested. But anyways, um, that's when that first $70,000 um, contract was awarded to me Whew. right after that. And that's when I started seeing God's purpose, his plan, his, his word come, come alive, you know, in my life. And I was like, Oh my God, I just grew to multiple six figures in a single month. How mm -hmm. powerful most small business entrepreneurs can't even do that in a year, yep. let alone in a single month. And, and then I saw this phenomena, like the government is obligated to spend a certain percentage of their business uh, spending with minorities, with women, with veterans, with small businesses, and those who have been socially, economically disadvantaged. And that was me. Mm -hmm. I was at every great disadvantage. I remember um, before transforming my life with government contracts, I remember there would be like gunshots in the neighborhood that I lived in. And I, I hated living there. I grew up there. I love, I love the community. I loved all that stuff, but I hated the blight that mm -hmm. I had to face there. And I did not want my children growing up in that environment, but I had no other choice, but to just, you know, just to bear with it. And so I remember there used to be gunshots and I would go run and grab my children and just, you know, drop down, um, afraid that a bullet was going to come through my house because my, my brother had lived, um, probably about seven doors down and a bullet came through his house and wow. it like flew right over his head. And wow. one time a bullet actually did come through my son's bedroom. And it was like, his bed was about this high. The bullet came through the wall right here. And I didn't even know it and, or notice it until after the fact, one day I went to go pick him up from school and I saw I'm like, what is this hole right here? And I looked on the outside of the house and I noticed that it was a, a bullet and wow. it was from um, a, sh a shooting that had happened a couple of nights before. And I was like, I, I got to get myself out of this situation. And that's when I just really started thinking about how I was going to take this information that I had learned about government contracts to change my life, to mm -hmm. change my family legacy, to save my children and to get them out of the situation of, you know, just growing up in a blighted community powerful 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 i want to so then i'll ask you then if that's the case because not only are you a successful business owner now but you coach several other new and aspiring business owners mm -hmm. who are looking to mimic the same success you've been able to have if not even more mm -hmm. what do you think is the biggest reason why most business owners find themselves stuck is it more due to a lack of information or is it more so due to a lack of pain a lack of motivation because you talked about with yourself getting yeah. to that low point of just like, I have to change. 
I can't yeah. be here for the greater good of yeah. my son that I'm trying to raise. So is it more information or is it more lack of motivation? I think it comes from within. It's it's more it's more lack of not even motivation but purpose, right? Okay. You have to have a great purpose to navigate through minimal information as provided confusion and bureaucracy and red tape. You have to be motivated and keep your eyes on the prize. For me, I knew what was important to me. I knew it was important for me to get myself out of the neighborhood. I knew it was important for me to provide for my children um, and to sustain my life. So for me, that was my drive. That was my purpose. And so I kept my eyes on the prize. So regardless of what was happening, all the no's, because you will get no's, you know, right. in yep. this particular industry. So you get a lot of no's, but it was like all the no's was like, it's nothing compared to what I'm living. And so right. you got to get to a place where you're just fed up and tired and sick yep. and tired, right? And so for, I, I believe that most people in general, especially black and brown people, have been programmed so much to the point to where they can't even see the opportunities when it's right in front of them because they believe that you got to work hard to make the money, right? You got to spend a lot of hours to make the money. You got to have multiple serial businesses in order to really grow and make and create wealth. And you don't, it's not only lack of information, but misinformation. Um, and also just like who you believe you that you are, like, what do you not know about yourself? What do you, people just don't believe, right? You know, people don't believe. And I, and I, I think that, what I love most about working with um, the entrepreneurs that I that I'm blessed to be able to encourage um, is giving them the belief that they can do things um, that, that seemingly is impossible, right? Mm -hmm. And also reminding them of their purpose, right? Yeah. It's, it's all it's all in the Bible, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to go into deep into the scripture, but it's all right. it's all in the Bible. It's like abundance is your birthright and you're supposed to prosper even as your soul is prospering you're supposed to be in good health all of those things are is biblical and we are creators we're made in the image of god and so it sh we shouldn't be struggling mm -hmm. but because of the programming a lot of people are just doing things wrong backwards they instead of spending time on figuring out this thing that's guaranteed money right um they are building websites, which doesn't produce money. They're doing uh, building uh, business cards that does not produce money. They're going to networking events where everybody's passing out cards and that does not produce money. It's just like, but there's this phenomena that says I must spend a percentage of this multi-trillion dollar spend with people who look like you. And all you have to do is position yourself and have something to offer mm -hmm. that solves the problem. And there are hundreds of thousands of daily problems that the government, especially the federal government daily alone is saying, here's the problem. We're looking for solvers, like right. problem solvers. And a percentage of this needs to go to black and brown people and women and socioeconomic disadvantage. And this is how you transfer the wealth from the government into your family so that you're able to be prosperous. And so, you know, it, I mean, I could, I could go on and on. Like how <laughs> I, I, can, I can literally feel how passionate you yeah. are about this because like, not only has it changed your life, but it's changed the lives of hundreds of thousands of others that have access to this information. And now on this podcast episode, we want to be able to give that information to even more people. So let's, let's just dive right into it. Then for those who don't know, what exactly is a government contract? So, you know, I, I love that question. So, cause I, I just like to color a picture, right? Yes, so you yeah. know how when you start a business and if you go to business class or any type of um, business school or something like that, or a training, they tell you to, to carve out your target market, right? Mm -hmm. And they say B2C, this is what we hear, B2C. And that's business to consumer. Yep. They say your target market should be Tamika who's age 40 who has a job that's making about a hundred thousand dollars a year who's maybe married with children and have a, edu a college education well tamika is one person and in order to make multiple six figures or even six figures alone yep. you have to have multiple tamikas in order to really hit that target which is where now you're working like a slave mm -hmm. and it's impossible for you to really nearly impossible for you to really do it because you don't have no financial capacity to get that type of reach right and so um, it's it's the it's the contracting with the government, the B two G business model that most people are not aware of, and I believe that um, once you understand that 
targeting the government is the biggest client. One specific contract could be more than 10 times your revenue that you're making right now. You can literally 10 extra revenue in six months when you position yourself to do this right. As you saw, uh, you know, when I grew my business to multiple six figures, that's over $245,000 in a single month. But before I was doing that, that's 10 X what I was doing in the year doing the B2C business model. And so I love empowering entrepreneurs and infor informing them of like this little known phenomena, because I know that it can definitely transform their lives. 38%. That's the amount of entrepreneurs that are struggling to get their business funded because their personal credit isn't where it needs to be. Now you can look into alternatives like corporate credit cards and vendor accounts, but the truth is the easiest way to get access to five to six figures in funding is to have good personal credit. As an entrepreneur, the stress of trying to build a successful business is already enough as is. So why work harder than you need to when you can simplify the funding process by getting your credit restored? My company, Take All Financial, has served hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you by helping them avoid the pain of getting denied for business funding by restoring their personal credit and we want you to be the next one. So click the link above or below this video to secure your free consultation and let's put you in position to get you funding that your business needs. So we have these government contracts, right? And pretty much these the government has contractual agreement with business owners like yourself to buy products or services from why is it that the government i mean it's the government right like naturally yeah. for even for myself i'm yeah. not a very political person but it's like okay. it's the government they're all they have yeah. they're all powerful they could do whatever right. they want they could stop this podcast right now if they want to if they right want to. Yeah. Uh -huh. why is the government going to dr karwana d why are they going to dr karwana's these students for products now why is the government not going out and getting these things themselves versus going to you guys because it's the law and not only is it the law, it's, it's, it's mandated. So if you look up the Small Business Act of America, you would see that the government is obligated to do so, specifically because all the money that they have, which is the multiple trillions of dollars, who do you think that money comes from? It comes from the taxpayers. We are the taxpayers. And which is why they can't go spend your money like that. They can't just go spend your money. They got to give it back to you in some kind of way. Right. So when the government, like you got to think of the government as a building, a bunch of buildings full of people. These are employees, people, mm -hmm. right? And these people are eating, they're drinking, they're consuming, they're they're typing, they're thinking, you know, they're doing all, they have mental health issues. They, they're looking for places to live. So all the things that that they have to consume to operate in business and in life they have to consume it through you because you are the taxpayer and so this is like a fair and equitable way of getting the money that you've already participated in putting into the government's pockets getting some of that transference of wealth back you know um and, and in exchange for your service right and it's just the regular, we're talking about food-based businesses. We're talking about mental health services. We're talking about contractors, electricians, painters, art. People are getting contracts for singing and playing instruments, for doing music, musician services, for dancing. They're getting contracts for doing hair and cutting hair, barber services, for, as you saw, mind, videography, photography, web design, graphic design. You name it. I literally just just quoted, um, submitted a quote for a contract. They wanted um, rims of paper, four hundred rims of paper. It's a palette. I saw a contract that I that I'm thinking about bidding on for seven hundred sheep to eat grass on the side of the road. Seven hundred sheep to graze grass on the side of the freeway right and you don't have to have the sheep you just got to know where to go get the people who does have the sheep right and so it's it's just crazy that there are so many opportunities out there um that were in fact this right here a quarter of a million a for on for sticky, sticky notes. notes if you know where to go get sticky notes you can potentially secure yourself a quarter of a million dollar contract if you bid and, and either have the lowest quote or most compatible contract. It's just the opportunities are there. There is no reason why any small business owner, especially if you're black and brown, yeah, you, you don't have to struggle if you do things the right way. Okay. Let me let me make sure I'm understanding. So I want to <laughs> I, I want to make sure me and you are walking the same path here. Let me make sure I have a full understanding. <laughs> we have the government, right? Yes. The government has all this money. They have 
this money tucked away somewhere Uh and they are legally obligated to spend it in some way, shape or form. Yes. They go to business owners like Dr. Carwana D. They may come to Marvin Francois. They may come to any, anyone who got has a product or service to sell. Yeah. And you mean to tell me from physical products like reams of paper, pens, pencils, and papers going all the way to services. If I heard you correctly, singing, dancing, uh, entertainment and beyond the government will take, this pile of money and form contracts with business owners like you and I for, for these things. And we'll Absolutely. be able to make, we are able to make five, sometimes even 10 times what we're probably already making now yep. selling these products and services to consumers and just changing who we're selling them to, i.e. now being the government. Am I understanding that yep. correctly? Absolutely. You're, uh, absolutely. You're on point. So, and it's, so just think of it as selling in bulk. You're selling your products and services in bulk. Okay. That's and so absolutely, that's exactly what it is. And they literally buy everything. What is so now what is the most amount of money that you personally have ever seen someone get from just one contract? Well, the bil- multi billionaire that um that I was freelancing for who made me very aware of this mm-hmm. had acquired multiple billions of dollars. One contract was like over two billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. And it's for, but he was a, a construction um, contractor engineer. So he was like doing excavation and building and things like that. So $2 billion. So I have a, I have a colleague who's in real estate mm-hmm. and her mm-hmm. best friend was at a conference and showed her a contract that she was awarded for real estate services. Mm. It was $80 billion, 80 billion. Right. So depending on your industry, um, and depending on, you know, the size of the scope of work, the length, the term of the contract, you can get anywhere from a quarter of a million all the way up to multiple millions or even billions, depending on your industry. The average contract awarded, um, and you can like Google this, the, what is the average contract, government contract awarded to a small business is mm-hmm. over $2.7 million annually per small business, right? In 2020, the the federal government alone spent over $10 trillion on business products and services, and their obligation was 26% of um, that spend had to go to socioeconomic disadvantaged businesses. And so that's $2.6 trillion that's on the table. Mm -hmm. But yet in 2020, during COVID, now this is at the height of COVID, so many black and brown businesses went out of business. So many mom and pop shops went out of business. So many companies that are not aware of this contracting um, phenomena went out of business and they had to close their doors, but yet there was $2.7 trillion on the table. I was able to more than 10 X my business during COVID. So when they have these things on the news, like uh, it's a recession or there's some mass diseases like COVID or something's happening right in the media, you know what the government is doing? They're creating new budgets to solve those problems. And so if you become a a problem solver during those periods, you're making money, you're 10 X and you're a hundred X X in your business. During that period, there was a young man, they were buying hand sanitizers and face facial masks. There was a young man, he was 16 years old, His name is Wesley Ross, who secured millions of dollars just selling the hand sanitizers and facial masks. He didn't have to make it. All he had to do was go find where to buy it and sell it to the government. They were buying it. You got to think about, can the government go buy their own face masks? Why, why, you know, why are they have this such a, a great need? No, they can't go buy it themselves. They have to buy it from business owners. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when, so that means there was a problem. If you can solve the problem, you can get paid tremendously, handsomely uh, for solving those problems. So really, it's just about what is your purpose? What is the purpose you were designed to solve the problem for and solve that problem in a greater capacity with the government? Because now you're doing it one to many. This is insane. This is OK. Let me take a couple steps back here before we dive deeper sure. into the government contracting space. Yes. I, and I, I would be <laughs> remiss if I didn't talk about this. One of one of your mentors, a gentleman that I follow very closely, uh, Dr. Myron Golden, yes. he actually has a quote I love. He says, it's easier to make a lot of money in a little bit of time, time. <laughs> than there, it is for you to make a little bit of money, money. in a lot of time. Lot and of you, in now listening to you unpack all this, you've been yeah. on both sides of the coin, right? Mm-hmm. You yeah. were in a situation where you were putting in 50, 40, 50 hour weeks, making, making, a, little bit of money. making a little bit of money. Yeah. Your first contract, you're multiplying that by yep. X amount 
right? For a little bit of time. For mm-hmm. a little bit of time. And now yeah. fast forward, helping other people do the same. From your first contract up until now, what exactly, as you're navigating this government contracting space, like you're telling, like you said, multiple trillion dollars that the government is literally yeah. sitting there like, hey, it's for y'all. If you want it, mm-hmm. you can come get it. But somebody, somebody yeah. don't have to get this money. Yeah. Now being in this industry and, and going through that transition from the video production space now to the government contracting space, mm-hmm. what is the biggest lesson about building a successful business that that transition has taught you? It's, it's, it taught me some, I mean, I, I've learned so much. In fact, um, Dr. Myron Golden is also now my client. So he's also, not only is he my mentor, but he said he want to go mm-hmm. out and figure out how to get some of that money himself. And he's highly successful, right? right. He's very successful. And so, um, one of the things that has taught me is financial literacy. <laughs> that used to be a boring term for me. Yep. Like it's taught me the truth about finances, the truth about wealth, the truth about um, abundance, the truth about um, re- removing the limitations that we have because of the pro- programming that we have. Right. Mm-hmm. So like you said, you can make a, a lot of money in a little bit of time. And the, by the way, those those 28 days of work for that $70,000 that I worked for was only two day, two hours a day so that's 56 hours that's equivalent to one work week for seventy thousand dollars so just imagine doing that every month you know and so when i understood um the truth right it just Mm -hmm. opened up my mind it 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 also uh, taught me my uh, my greater purpose like i've always been a a giver and a server like i've always loved helping people even when i was broke i was helping people like i would give the people my last yep. i would you know take off take the shirt off my back and give it to somebody if they needed it so i always had a heart to serve so now i'm in a position to really serve in a greater capacity um and and i feel blessed to do it you know to be able to help people not only access capital for themselves but to create wealth in the process but also learn the truth about money because when you don't know the truth about money you lose it Mm -hmm. period right money is a tool it is not something that you're supposed to covet it's something that you're supposed to use to make more money that is the only purpose in a job for money is not to put it in put it under a pillow but to put it into vehicles by which it's growing and your passive income eventually when you do this correctly will outpace and outgrow your active income and that's the only true way of having financial freedom and time freedom is to figure out the system mm-hmm. and that is what is has taught me how to figure out the system and and listen by by the game that you're giving me right now it sounds it sound like you chose the best system there is listen <laughs> if you guys don't see this podcast anymore you see that the government owns it you know why it was it's, it's dr carl yeah. fault. she didn't she made me sell the podcast yeah. to the government y'all yeah. No, yeah. okay, but okay. So now, let's start from ground zero, right? Let's say I'm a business owner. I have a product or yeah. service. You could choose. I'll let you choose whatever one you want. I come to you and I say, "All right, Doctor Kawana, I'm sold. I want to sell this thing that I've been selling to these individuals. I want to shift my avatar. I want to start selling to the government. Mm-hmm. From start all the way to contract secured. What's that? St- what's the step by step process I have to take to get my secure my first contract? Yeah. So great question. So really, I love helping small businesses navigate the system. And um, over the past two years alone, I've helped more than 5,000 small business entrepreneurs get pre-qualified for government contracts. And I've and I've helped a, a handful of them actually secure and generate over 25 million and growing in additional revenues on top of what they were already doing. And really, it all starts with a four step system. The first step is um, having the right business foundation. A lot of times when you're, especially when you're a small business owner, and by the way, um, the definition of a small business owner by way of um, the small business um, administration defines a small business as any company that has under 500 employees and makes less than $20 million a year for five years straight. Mm. So we're talking about people who are really disenfranchised when you're talking about um, most small business owners don't even make six figures. And yep. that starts at $100,000. Um, in fact, 80, 86% of small businesses in America make less than $100,000, right? And so when you're talking about that, many of those small business owners, the reason why they are small is because they are just unaware um, that you do have to have the right foundation. And, and that is having all of your ducks in order you know, having your um, your EIN, your LOC documents. Um, if you're an S corp, making sure that you have all of those records. Your taxes must be compliant. You know, a copy of your birth certificate. Once you have your fundamental documents, then you can get certified. 
getting certified as a small business um, that is minority, that is woman owned, that is veteran, LGBT, whatever your social economic disadvantage is, it is your golden ticket to participating in um, the pools of money that they have set aside for those socially economically disadvantaged groups. Is money with your name on it, right? But you got to go through the paperwork in order right. to claim it. And so next we have uh, marketing. You must understand how to market yourself to the decision makers, um, to those um, who are writing the checks. You have to understand the value that you bring. So you're not selling your time for money anymore. Now you're selling your value for large contracts. And so you got to understand how to demonstrate the value that you bring. And I, I hope people unlock the value um, in, in my five-day challenge. We, we talk about we're, 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 that more. That. Uh, but then finally, proposals. Once you've done those first, first three steps, now all you're doing is identifying opportunities and responding to them. And you have to do it consistently. Identify the opportunities and respond to them. And they're telling you exactly um, what the problem is and how to respond. They right. give you the instructions on how to respond, but most people are fearful uh, when it comes to that. Like, oh my God, it's a lot of it's a lot of pages and I don't understand the language. And um, what if I mess up? What if I quote too much? Or what if I under, it's all of these questions that, that are, begin to go through your head. Um, and it's, all it is is fear, the fear of success. But if you just do it and learn along the way, eventually those no's will begin to turn into yeses. And so once you do that, those four steps, that's it. Then it becomes rinse and repeat. Look for the opportunities and respond to them. And now you have a system by which you're able to print and make as much money as you possibly um, want you, as, as you want to. Listen, if you're an entrepreneur struggling to get funding because of your bad credit, then this video is for you. You see, I understand that when banks deny businesses for funding, they're not just denying businesses the capital they need, but they're also denying business owners the resources that they need to build the business of their dreams. And as a business owner, I've seen this happen over and over and over and over again, but I want you to know that there's a solution. Because here at Takeoff Financial, we've helped countless entrepreneurs just like you go from having poor personal credit and not being able to access funding to having perfect personal credit that they were able to leverage to access five to six figures in funding, and we want you to be the next one. So click the link above or below this video to secure your free consultation, and we'll see you on the other side of Success Family. I love that. With government, and once again, this is for me, I'm, I, I am not... Anyone who knows me knows I'm not into like politics and things of that nature. Yeah. And I'm still, I'm learning as you're teaching me. Yeah. But if I remember correctly with the government, there's like three levels. There's like local, state, and federal. Yep. So yes. are you only, are we only able to secure contracts like from one level of government or are we able to get different types of contracts from different levels of government? How does that work? Yeah. So you're able to get different types of contracts from various levels, all three. Like I am, I'm more than a, just a, a person that teaches people how to get government contracts. I'm a wealth creator. I show you how to multiply your wealth and optimize your yeah. business for wealth creation. And so for me, it's like when you're in position to get a contract for local state and or federal, regardless of what vehicle they roll that money or those opportunities out, you are ready and prepared because there may be an opportunity right now in your city that you can participate. If you're not city certified as a local small business, you can't participate in those set aside funds. There may be an opportunity in your state that you can participate. You're well qualified. You have the skill set. You may not be able to participate in, in it if you're not doing those steps. Right. Um, and then on the federal level, it doesn't matter if you are black, white, green, brown. If there are opportunities out there, it doesn't matter if you're a contractor, you know where to go buy toilet paper. You can get that toilet paper contract. So I say um, to optimize so that you're in, in position to um, grab the money on every level of government. I love that. You, you're in a position now where you've coached so many entrepreneurs that have wanted to venture in this space. You talked about, you know, the four steps of uh, that being the foundation, the certification, and then of course the marketing, and then the, also the proposals as well. Yes. What have you seen, if not within that four, the, that four step system, have you seen one specific indicator of individuals that have come into this in, or try to come into the space and not been able to have success? Because I want to be able to remove any type of excuses or any type yeah. of reasons for someone to come in here and not win. What yeah. has, if not outside of that four step system, has there ever been anything that has been the common reason why people have tried to come in the government contracting space yeah. and say like, Oh, this doesn't work. It's not true. It's Absolutely. not going to happen. Talk to me Absolutely. about that. Self doubt, self talk, doubt, 
fear, giving up, quitting. Those are all the reasons why a person who gets into this field may not win. Mm. But if you're, if you're, if you're a believer that it can work for you and you actually do the work, it will work. Mm. Right. So it's not that it's, it's not that it's, oh, some people win and some people don't No, the difference between the person who wins and a person who don't is the conversations that you're having with yourself in your mind. If you're a quitter, this is not going to work for you. Um, but if you are the type of person that believe it can work and you're an action taker, you will make mistakes along the way. But as long as you don't quit, you will win. And so that is the difference between the person who wins and don't your mindset. I love it. I love it. As we start to start to close things out. I know we talked about it earlier, but I have, I would love to, sir. I want to circle back to it. Mm -hmm. The humble beginnings that you came from, you know, you mentioned at the top being number four out of seven children from Louisiana, you moved to San Francisco, you're yeah. raised there. Fast forward several years later, you start your first business, just mm -hmm. in the trenches, trying to find success. And it seems like nothing's working to mm -hmm. where you are now, right? Not mm -hmm. only having success for yourself, but also helping to establish success for other aspiring business owners yeah. as well. Could you speak to entrepreneurs who are who may be watching this sit down right now and where they are today is very similar to exactly where you were several years ago before you had that turning point to go, come into the mm -hmm. government contracting space. Mm -hmm. If you could say anything to them that you wish you would have heard outside of, of course, the conversation you had with the billionaire at the time. Yeah. But if you could say something to them that you wish you heard at that point in time in your life that you know would help them to break the same glass ceiling you had over yourself, what mm -hmm. would that be? I actually wish that I would have heard that there's more to the American dream than going to school, getting a job and buying a house. Hmm. I didn't know that, um, that all of that was like really untruth. Right. So it was all a lie, even though you can do that, but the person who does that and follow that is, is the average middle-class American, which the middle class is the new poor. If you have not yeah. um, noticed, right. right. So you're the person that pays 50% taxes or more and, and begins to struggle mm -hmm. with hundreds of thousands of student loans and debt, right? And so if that is you, like, if that's you, you know, I'm telling the truth because right. I've been there. I know what it's like, right? I wish I would have heard someone tell me the American dream is what you want. What do you want out of life? It, it's whatever you want to accomplish. And for me, um, the things that I always wanted to accomplish was wealth and prosperity, but also just so I won't have to struggle because I know I knew it was going to take money in order to have um, the type of lifestyle that I wanted. And I didn't know how um, how it was going to come. But this has like been the greatest um, phenomenon. This has been the greatest awakening that I've had is learning about contracting with the government and understanding my worth and my value. And also, um, you know, that college is not always the only way, right. you know, um, college is great. And that's another thing, like, you know, we were told, we were told that, you know, if you go to school, you're going to make all this money, you're going to be, you know, top of the class and all this stuff. But unless you are a doctor or a lawyer or some type of psychologist, college is really overrated. And I'm, I have a doctor's degree, I have a PhD, all those things. And so I'm not against education, but I am against um, miseducation mm. of the people, right? And I believe that um, we need to know about trades. There are, there are people who graduate from school, go into the trades and they're making multiple six figures in their first year. Yep. The yep. trades, right? Um, entrepreneurship. There are people who graduate from school or even drop out of school, start a business, learn how to do it right. And they're making millions of dollars. But we are taught this one path, go to school, get an education, get a job. Right. And that is the struggle. That's the struggle path. And so I wish I would have had um, not only that mentor, but just awareness, the truth. Right. Just like we were told that. Um, Christopher Columbus discovered America and it wasn't until you was grown yeah. <laughs> and able to do your own research. You start seeing that everything that you were taught was a lie. And then you start questioning, like, why do I know the wrong things? Why do I know Tony the Tiger is great? Why do I know about what is the man, uh, uh, Jeffrey from Toys R Us? I'm a Toys R Us. Why do I know these things? But then I don't know how to multiply my wealth. I don't know that um, Bank of America and Wells Fargo and all of those different companies are, are basically robbing us and mm -hmm. making money off us where there are there are other banks that are out there that will give you percentage compound interest that are fi that's five and six percent of your money where it's making money. Why don't I know those things? And right. so I wish yeah. I would have known more truth 
and had more people, um, you know, reveal those truths to me at, at a very earlier age. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Dr. Kawana D, I appreciate your time immensely. <laughs> I know that you have two programs. Well, one, you, you have your monthly GovCon challenge, which I would love for you to talk about as well for mm -hmm. those who are watching and want to learn even more about the government contracting space. Talk to the individuals yeah. who are watching about that. And then also, of course, where they can find you as well. Yeah. So, um, so I have the GovCon challenge, yes, so you can actually get registered, um, govconchallenge.com for our upcoming training. This is where we walk you through the process and I'm pretty sure you'll have the link in yeah, the show notes for, sure. for everybody. So this is where we walk you through the process of getting your business pre-qualified and during that challenge, not only uh, do you become awake and aware, but you understand your value and how much money is on the table. So you can have a game plan to participate in this transference of wealth. So my, um, my mission is to help 1,000 black and brown and women entrepreneurs secure their million mm. in government contracts. That's $1 billion in financial impact. Imagine what that would do for our communities, our babies, our future. Just imagine what that would do, right? right. And so um, so outside of that, you must go through the prequal challenge in order to qualify for me to be your mentor because we have to be on the same page right. like you have to understand and know what I know before I can mentor you um, because it becomes easier to help you get to the finish line and to help you get a result once you have at least the basic information. And so um, you can learn more about that after you go through the challenge. I do have a book um, that is available. It's called Don't Duck the Government. Mm -hmm. They've got your money. And it's all about how you can make millions pitching and winning government contracts. That's available at don'tduckthegovernmentbook.com. Um, a lot of great, valuable information. But thank you so much. I appreciate you for having me here today. Most definitely. Thank you for your time and thank you for the value that you provided, not only me, but to everyone watching at home. And for the people who are watching and listening at home, if you haven't already, make sure you take a second, take a minute, take an hour to go ahead and show love to this episode and tap in with, of course, Dr. Kawana D's monthly GovCon challenge. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mar Francois. That's Dr. Kawana D. R. Irving. Y'all have been good. We've been great. This has been amazing. And as always, thank everyone and God bless. Peace.